book, I one of the things I've I, I read and I've seen is that you had the whole journey, and I think it's a very inspiring for a lot of entrepreneurs that struggle in the current economy as well. Um, that you have a whole story of how you started your business, struggled, you started from your apartment and working your way to, to have a million dollar or million rand business at, at least. Um, and uh, I think just for the viewers and people out there that really want to give up on their business and really mm -hmm. struggle, just provide us with some hope. With some hope. With your journey, with your journey. <laughs> with my journey, with my journey. Yeah, thank you very much, Jasper. Uh, yeah, just to, in short, you know, I came from a background, uh, grew up in a mining community, uh, five children, and we grew up very, very poor, extremely poor. You know, so poor that sometimes we didn't have food on the table. And we never had toys. We always had to play with the neighbor's toys, and clothing was always passed on from the cousins. Always, there was never money, you know. Um, my dad worked very hard. My dad was not a business person. My mom as well not. Although my mom had two, three, four jobs, different jobs, just to, to help uh, putting food on the table and help putting us through school. There was no money to go and um, study after school. So right after school, my parents were always drilling it into us that you have to go and work. So when you matric, you have to leave the house. So all of our children, we had to find work immediately. So after school, I didn't know what I wanted to do. So I enrolled in the police force. So just quickly, briefly, from the police force, I um, was four years in the police force. I resigned because I couldn't take it anymore because um, it was the year that Nelson Mandela was released, 1994. And there was so much riots going on. And I realized being in the police force, not to put down the police force, but I became very, very hard person because I wanted to fit in. Throughout my whole school, I was bullied and for always being different and emotional bullying with my um, school peers, school teachers, brothers, sister, as well as physical, I was physically bullied. And that resulted in, in my life hating myself. It resulted in that I don't feel that I belong on this earth. I've got no value on this earth. And to such a point that I wanted to commit suicide quite a few times. I remember the one day I was sitting, uh, there was a final straw in the police force. I was sitting under a tree with my gun to my um, chin. And I would say luckily now, because three people in our family committed suicide, but immediately I thought of my grandma who committed suicide. And the struggle she went, because she wasn't dead immediately when she shot herself. And the pain it ha left for our family. And that went through my mind. and. I thought to myself, no, I can't do this to my family. So I found my dad come and fetch me. Um, luckily he did, you know. Um, but yeah, growing up very poor with all this bullying and, and self-hate and low self-esteem, it took it throughout my whole life. And I try to get acceptance from people, always trying to please people and to fit in, which end up in resulting myself doing just um, these destructive behavior things, you know, going, f start using drugs um, just to fit in with the crowd, uh, start in, um, what do you call this, unruly sexual behavior and things, and just to feel acceptance and feel good to myself, and I don't know what you call this, promiscuity, promiscuity, living a life of promiscuity with the drugs, and luckily not so much alcohol, but some alcohol, Good thing is I never got addicted to drugs, so thank God for that. You know, I was always like, okay, what the heck is this supposed to do to me? You know, I was trying all the different things. Luckily, nothing injected, but all the sniffing and, and orally, nothing injected. I refused to do any of those injections, and so I was job hopping from the one job I couldn't really hold the job. Every year or two years, I would change jobs, which is all part of my destructive behavior and and distracting myself and it was 20, 2010, uh, 2010 yes that I went to a seminar of Robin Banks one of his mind power seminars and I walked out and I went a second time and I walked out and a third time and I walked out what I realized is that I wasn't in emotional space right for what he was teaching but I bought his book 
mind power in the 21st century, although I walked out. And one thing he said that stuck into my mind is that my thoughts, my words, and my actions are powerful forces of attraction. So regardless of that, I walked out. That stuck into my head. And I thought, wait a minute. My thoughts, my words, and my actions are powerful forces of attraction. I am a magnet. And I started working through that Mind Power book. That's why I always refer back to that. That was part of my journey of start changing myself and start taking control of my life. Look, I'm goosebumps. I realized that I had to take control of my life. You mean me goosebumps, goosebumps as well? <laughs> <laughs> Nobody else would do that for me. You know, I lived a life of self-hate, of depression. I was struggled with depression and anger, a lot of anger in my life because of all the 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 shit that happened in my life and I always blamed other people and the economy and situations for that I don't have enough and I blamed God mm. you know I remember walking down the sea point in the promenade late at night and I would shout at God you know I would take my fist and say God if I can get you I will bump you I will, yeah. I will hit you I will kick you I will strangle you you know and um, that's how I talk to God yeah. you know but later I realized you know what that's the relationship I have with my God is that I can talk to my God like that because I said, God, you know, I mean emotionally, you know, but I said, God, you know, you know my heart, you know, deep inside me, you know who I am. And one thing that while I was on this destructive behavior and doing drugs and all those kind of things, I had this deep thought of that, I am better for this. I am made for something much bigger. I didn't know what it was until now, but that actually kept me from really stepping so over that I can't get back with my you know with doing the drugs self-destructive behavior and all those kind of things and I always had this thought that I am better and I'm destined that's the word actually that was in my mind and in my it was like it was engraved in my soul that I am destined for better things and so I started this journey in searching for what is this I've, and by doing this mind affirmations, this positive affirmations, all, and learning that it's not, it's not a, a quick fix. It's an ongoing journey. I need to do this positive affirmations and this mind control and, and starting to visualize the life that I want for me. And looking there, although I don't feel it, although I don't see it, and this is where faith comes in. What is faith? Faith is the substance of the things that we hope for that we don't see. So I had to start visualizing and tell myself, you know, I want to be happy. I am happy. Uh, I am successful in the sense I am financially successful. I'm successful in everything that I do. And I started to start visualizing these things. And I remember in Seapoint walking, a picture comes to my mind now, behind this police station, walking from the gym, walking from the gym, that I would literally go and walk and pull my take my fingers and put my face like I am happy, I am happy, fuck I'm not happy, but I'm happy, you know. Forcing yourself to be happy. Forcing myself to, to be happy until I was start feeling it, you know, bringing that from a conscious level into my subconscious because I realized that what I'm learning in this book, it's principles and these principles always work and that your subconscious mind and your conscious mind know don't know the difference whether it's real or not and I had to enforce that in self mean that's how I started my journey and don't get me wrong you know I'm not perfect you know I still get angry I still get times that I'm lonely I still get times that I feel that I'm falling back into depression but the good thing is now I've learned those patterns I've learned to listen to my talk listen to my voice and see the patterns of what I'm about to go and do and then I realize okay I have a choice I can either stay here have a good self pity party what's it something good to have a pity party you know I'm not gonna lie to it not, you not easier than being a it's not easier to have a self pity party poor me and the world owes me and everybody owes me you know and but I always say to people it's good to have those emotions it's good to recognize it but it's not good to stay there take yourself out of here you can take yourself out of there and I've learned that and I've learned uh, through Robin Banks teachings and Grant Cardone and a lot of Tony Robbins those, those people are my gurus that I have the power of choice that I can choose the outcome of my life and I've learned that I am NOT what happened to me in the past 
I'm not that person. I am what I choose to be. And what I choose to become, that's who I am. So I had to learn to take control of 100% responsibility for my life, for the good things and the bad things in my life. And I've learned that all the bad things in my life were all there that shaped me. And today I'm grateful and I can say, God, thank you. And I still do that today. Thank you for the shit that's happened in my life. Thank you for the bad things that happened in my life. Because I'm, I'm learning now that it's all for a reason. And it's my job to find that reason, to look for the good reason in that. And when you do that, amazing that your, your mood changes, your whole outlook in life changes. It's like they say, you become what you focus on. So I had to learn to focus on the good things and, and that I have a, a, a contribution in this life and to find my passion and my, part of my passion is to help people through their own journeys. And that's why I also became a business coach. Because I'm an, um, a business person, I had to learn, I didn't have a degree in business or anything like that. And that what I learn, I can give to other people. And this is what my book is all about. It's my life story. And that's why I call it my business autobiography. It's not just my business journey, but it's also my personal journey. And for people who are losing hope out there, you know, don't you are much worthy than what you currently experience you are destined for greatness you are destined for such amazing things and don't believe that everything is a quick fix you have to be consistently in what you're doing otherwise you're not going to, you're going to give up very very easily successful people and winners are those people that fall down and pick themselves up if you fall down and you stay there and you give up, that is when you're unsuccessful. And it makes a beautiful story as, as being a part of a journey. Yeah, thank and, you. And uh, I, think, I think when we realize that, that every so-called failure is actually an opportunity to, to rise above that and use every, every failure as an opportunity. Um, and you, you, you set in your mind consciously see a failure as a Seeing a, a failure, yes, unfortunately, yeah, start winning. Yeah, unfortunately, society and our parents, because of lack of the right teachings and the knowledge, um, has taught us that um, failure is, is a bad thing, you know, and what keeps people from stepping out into their full potential and stepping out into the unknown is that fear of failure. What if? What if I'm going to fail? What if I'm not going to make it? What is my people going to say? It's fear. Fear is holding people back. And fear is nothing uh, otherwise than false evidence appearing real. Yes. You know, we're we putting that fear on there and we want to make a thing so big. Like an Afrikaans, you're making a bag for a mall swap. Yes. You know, in Afrikaans yes. they say That's that. Right. We, we assume things to be so much bigger, but it, actually it's not. And that fear is holding us back and it's crippling us from taking that first step, whatever that step is. If you want to resign your job and to find another job, if you want to resign quickly and start out being an entrepreneur, or finding a life partner, or what, going on holiday, whatever it is, it's fear and also fear of success. It's, it's amazing that a lot of people fear success because what they put to success is like, oh, I want to pay a lot of taxes and a lot of people is going to ask me for money and it's not, uh, I'm not going to put Christianity down but I've learned from my journey as a Christian that I was taught that it's the less you have the more humble you are. The less you have the more humble you are. And I grew up like I'm not supposed to have money. I'm not supposed to be rich. I'm not supposed to be wealthy. And that kept me from that limiting belief. It kept me from reaching my full potential. So I had to learn to love money and that money is actually a good thing. It's what I'm doing with the money. How, and how you add change potentially. How it can change. Yes, and how I can change the world around me by giving, by helping other people and having a good relationship with money. So it's all about changing our perceptions and reaching out. You know, the one good thing I did is when I've first got a business coach when we look at people all successful athletes out there in life and successful people have mentors or have coaches um, personal trainers 
because they understand the dynamic that they can look out from the outside. You have you just look on your journey and what you're experiencing, but a coach or a mentor looks from the outside and can see more. They have experienced certain success. They can impart that onto you. And the other good thing about having a mentor and a coach, they will push you beyond your what you believe your limits are. They can see your full potential and they push you and they hold you accountable. We all need that accountability. Otherwise we procrastinate and say, oh, another day I will do this or that or that. And where you have that coach or personal trainer, they just need to push you and to hold you accountable so that you can reach your success and, and your limits. So there is hope for everybody there. Don't ever, ever lose hope. Don't look at your circumstances and what you're experiencing right now. You know, whatever the situation is, that it's a hopeless situation, there's no hope for me, I can't make it. You are not your current situation. That is not who you are. You are what you want to be further down the line. You are, I really believe that, like we chatted earlier, we can all learn from each other. It doesn't matter who we are in life, everybody can learn from each other. Like you said, it's so good, put our egos aside. I love that when you mentioned that earlier on. And just be humble, be authentic, and be yourself. Don't compare yourself to other people, because that's a lot what happens with people that I want to keep compare myself like say, the Joneses. I want to have what the Joneses says. We all have our own journey. We all have our own path. We have to have patience in our path. And it doesn't mean that we can sit on our laurels and just think, oh, I'm going to pray, I'm going to put the things out there and it's going to come to me. It doesn't work like that. You have to put the work in. Work smart, work hard, have patience and know that the results that you want in life, it will come. But you have to put the work in. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for sharing my journey.